I want you to read one of the sections from your book that you're working on here, and it's one of my favorite stories. It's about how Grandpa taught you how to swim. And I've heard this several times, and you know you compare it to the Lord. And, it's one uh, of my favorites. And it's one of my favorites, too. So why don't you go ahead and read this excerpt from, from okay, your new book. Okay, thanks. I'll be glad to. We had just had a family picnic at Lake Bronson State Park, and Dad looked at me and he said, Today you're going to learn to swim. I remember it well. I was nine years old, and he took me to the floating dock in the middle of the lake. He put a rope under my arms and around my waist, all the time telling me that he would be holding the rope. Then he told me that I should jump at the count of three. The water was 14 feet deep, cold, my knees were shaking. I looked up at my dad. He was tall, strong, and I knew I could trust him. He began to count. One, two, three. I jumped. Dad is leaning over the dock, the rope securely in his hand. Move your legs. Kick. Move your arms. You can do this. Come on, Clara. You can do this. And soon I touched the dock. We did this two more times. Then he said, it's time to take the rope off. And at the count of three, I want you to jump in the water and do exactly what you've been doing. I will be right here. I won't let anything happen to you. I was scared. But I knew I could trust my father. And I jumped at the count of three. Again, he is encouraging me to kick and paddle. And soon my hands touch the dock. I jumped rope free two more times. And then I discovered that I could swim all by myself. And I wanted to stay in the water. I wanted never to have to get out. Later in life, I've been reminded that our Heavenly Father may require us to take a leap of faith. The water is cold and deep. We've never done it before. But the Lord says, I will never leave you. I'm right here. You can do it. We take that leap of faith, and we're never the same. Oh, that's great. That's great. I can't wait to read the rest of the book. Thank you. And all the other stories that are going to come. And I, I really miss Grandpa Rivenus. I do, too. Sometimes I look at pictures, and I can hear him talking and telling me, Clara, you can be anything. You're an American. You can do anything. And you're a Norski. He was always an encourager. Yeah. I remember when he, when he would see me, he would say, Hello, Yim! <laughs> with that Norwegian he was very accent. I'm proud of you, Jim. Yes. No, I know. And and uh, he was always asking me about the ministry and about preaching and and what I was up to. And and uh, and he was a real encourager. He was just a real encourager. He was a to great me. encourager. Uh, for years, I sent him. I'd make notes in uh, sermons of the John preached and then Jim preached, and I'd send them to Grandpa, and he'd write back and he'd say, "Oh." I've been so encouraged and so blessed. I wish I could preach like them. But Dad had his own way in his own time. And but he oh, he was a great encourager. Yeah, he was he was kind of a figure kind of larger than life, you know. He had that Scandinavian program in the Red River Valley area of Minnesota, Northwest Minnesota. Yes. And people still remember him today from that radio broadcast. You know, they also do. a pastor for many years. He never lost his brogue. People found it charming. There were times when it embarrassed me. But as I think about it, it was charming. Uh, and he was always himself and very comfortable in his own skin. Yeah, I'm 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 excited to to read the book and to see, you know, learn new things about Grandpa Rivenus. We've heard a lot of stories over the years about him and his ministry and some of the things he did. And uh, you're dividing the book into four seasons, right? Yes. Spring would be, spring involves when he was born in Norway. Uh, and I was pleased that John and I visited Norway and we saw where he was born. And 
um, so that made it very meaningful. So spring, when he was born and was a child, and then summer, things that happened in the summer, and then we go on to fall, and we end up with winter. Uh, so that's how I'm putting it together, those four seasons of my dad's life. Amen. With new strength to go on preaching yes. alone, I will soon be home with you and say thank you, Jesus, for fellowship together on the earth. Don't you that many years. Thank you for your own making life. You got a large part in my heart. The entire family, all our loved ones, thank you for our Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you for all what you did in my life. It's a miracle. And soon I shall be home and home. And all our loved ones, I want for you, gone through the years, in Northwest Minnesota. I look forward to the Lord. What a time there's going to be to see dear old again. Thank you, be God. I'll be meet in heaven forever to be with the Lord. Yeah. Not only 63 years, but to eternity. Yeah. What a future. Thank you for the home prepared. Mentions in heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for the message this night, brother. It's been good. <coughs> Strength to the soul of the priest, the Lord. I wouldn't miss the service. I wouldn't miss God. God give me strength. 